Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes films are some of my favorite. They're very unique and stylistic, and there is one aspect of these two films that I really enjoy even though I don't usually enjoy it in other films. That would be their use of slow motion. In cinema, it can be very easy for slow-mo to turn into a cheap gimmick, but the Sherlock films seem to use it in such a way that flawlessly blends style and function. One of the main reasons why the slow-mo works so well in these films is because it heavily complements Sherlock's character. He's a brilliant detective. He's able to observe minor details and formulate strategies in what seems like a lot of time to the audience, but in the film has only been a few seconds. During these moments when Sherlock is taking in his surroundings and planning his next moves, there is often a narration explaining his action and the consequence it is going to have. Then he executes the plan in real time. Finally, dragon left leg, fist of patella. Summary prognosis, conscious in 90 seconds, martial efficacy, quarter of an hour at best, full faculty recovery, unlikely. This use of slow-mo fits perfectly for the unique fighting style of these films. Sherlock is very precise in knowing how he is going to strike his opponent. His movements blend between slow and fast, which gives it a very fluid motion, and it also looks really cool. Slow-mo is also used to highlight a battle of wits. Come now. You really think you're the only one who can play this game. Which can sometimes reveal to the audience that the enemy is about to use a deceptive attack. Ultimately, the way the slow-mo affects the fighting is that it makes Sherlock look really clever while also providing a gritty sense of realism. Although the fighting is the most noticeable use of slow-mo in these films, there are also other instances of it that are highly complementary to the film's style as well. It's used when Sherlock and Watson are taking in very small details to try to piece something together, whether it be how a gunman made a shot from 650 yards away, or which ambassador at a peace gathering looks like he's had reconstructed face surgery and is actually there to assassinate a prime minister. This use of slow-mo gives a very clear focus to what Sherlock or Watson are deducing, and in certain cases, it also provides an elevated tension to the scene. Slow-mo is also used when they are recalling an event that happened earlier in the film, and these moments happen a lot. It's a very effective way of providing a closer look at something that the audience has already witnessed, but now has a new significance in the film. This is a common trope of mystery or detective stories, but it doesn't feel forced in these movies, and I appreciate that. Another way slow-mo is used is to give climactic scenes more gravitas or intensity. The slow-mo really helps to focus the energy of the scene, and is usually accompanied with soft music and muffled sound design as to give the effect of Sherlock drowning out the danger to focus on navigating the situation rather than panicking, or it's simply used to show that Sherlock is disoriented. Anyway, if there's anything that I want a filmmaker to get out of this video, it's that if you decide to use an effect like slow-mo, make sure that it's actually bettering your story. Think about how and why it's being used, and make sure that it's being utilized as a storytelling tool and not a toy. Sherlock Holmes is a difficult character to accurately capture, and these films do an excellent job of portraying such an icon in the realm of storytelling. Although the slow motion is a small tool used to stylize the film and provide clarity, it really aids the story in a great way. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It simply tells me what kind of videos I should be making versus what kind of videos I shouldn't bother making. Also, if you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Since my last video, I have quit my job, left home, and started interning for a film company as an editor. Now, before you think that's some sort of success story or something, I had been planning to do that for quite some time. This means one of two things. I will either be uploading more frequently or less frequently depending on the production schedule of where I'm working. Whichever one it is, I still want to keep up the quality of my videos and continue to improve them as I discover more about how to convey information in an interesting way. What I'm saying is that I'm not just going to pump out a bunch of mediocre videos because I feel pressured to upload. At least not on purpose. So thank you for your patience. Also, thank you very much for over 4,000 subscribers. I had less than 1,000 when I published my last video, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, my name is JD Thompson. Thank you for watching, and until next time, peace.